This is the PT6 uh, test cell. So that the PT6 is actually a turboprop engine. We use this engine a lot for the turbine classes. We also have it set up to where we can do some research as far as the new alternative re or replacement fuels. So mainly what we were doing with this is just trying to incorporate some newer technology, be able to replace this older control system, and that's how this shoebox project began. So this was just merely a conversation between myself and Brock earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, now you're going to see how this turned out today. This is the old control that was actually wired in. Brock had several hours just sorting through those old harnesses and then figure out what we could extract out of this and use toward that shoebox. So still want to make sure all the parameters were still the same. We want to make sure the wires that were labeled were still what they said they were. And in the end, there still was a lot of rewiring that had to be done. We would actually stand here and we'd have to hold these control switches in order to get the engine to set up and actually start and perform the way we wanted it to. So now we've taken and made it basically automatic. So I originally started out with, I just had a shoebox laying around. I thought this is about the size that the box should be. And I just made some cutouts for where I thought the displays would go, add some uh, indicator lights there, and you can kind of see the holes that were cut out for the switches. And from there on the inside, we kind of had some of the wires still left in there, but that's what held everything in place. It was a very crude, rudimentary system, but it held everything in place together uh, good enough for us to actually uh, bring it in here. We could turn it on. We could see all the gauges and lights turn on, and uh, we were able to hook it up just to make sure we were getting the proper values and everything. Uh, from there, I decided to actually go ahead and build this box. I made some CAD drawings of all the parts that we were going to need to fit in there. I did some milling of it to get everything to fit perfectly, and it looks cleaner that way. Um, and then we have all these displays that can show us oil, fuel pressure, uh, we got our engine and prop RPM, we can show our um, interstage turbine temperature, throttle setting, and then just a general overall display here. Um, and then we got our master switch, our emergency fuel cutoff switch. Uh, this is our starter, main start button. And then this is our engine condition. It'll tell us if the engine is currently running or if it's off. So that's what tells it uh, what it would like to do. Uh, and then basically on the back, we just have all the connections that go into it, and it kind of helps it allow it to uh, fit together a little nicer. We can also take data off of this and actually hook it up to a computer so we can, re we can record stuff on the computer as well in case uh, we want to track uh, logs of our temperatures or RPMs or any of our pressures or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to turn our fuel pump on. Now just get our fuel flowing to the engine. says we're good out there. So we'll turn our master switch on. That'll uh, give us some power uh, to the system. Turn emergency fuel on. That allows us to actually flow fuel to it. This is what we'd shut off in an emergency. Directly cuts the fuel off to the engine. We'll go ahead and turn the engine condition to on. That'll make sure it's in the proper sequence for starting. And then we we'll go ahead and hit the start button and it'll actually turn on. See, we have our oil pressure good. Everything looks good right now. It's a good start. No leak. No drip. We're good. Okay. We're good. Go ahead. A good light on. Good. It's starting to come out of feather. Yep. Go ahead and shut it off. Okay. So just simply turning the engine to the off condition, we'll go ahead and turn it off normally, uh, and then we'll just go ahead and shut off our emergency fuel, uh, and then once it's finally coasted down, we can actually turn the uh, main power off to it, and uh, that would cut off all electrical power to it. Go ahead and shut that off, and shut the fuel pump off. We've mainly simplified right. this to four switches entirely. Before there, we had uh, anywhere from six to ten switches that you had to hit just to turn it on. We've really simplified the whole process and even the start procedure. It used to be you'd actually have to start and watch ever, watch all the parameters when you're hitting the start button. Nowadays, like if you notice, all I did is I just hit start and just wait and it takes care of itself. So it's very uh, similar to what you'd actually find on an aircraft nowadays where it's just a push to start button. So we have actually reduced the, the potential failure modes here tremendously. From this point on, of course, we're, we're looking at uh, adding a few more 
uh, abilities to this uh, control box. But we've got a 496-97 project, our senior capstone projects out here. So there's a team that's actually going to take a look at this control room because now we've got to come up with the checklist in order to operate this engine with this new box. So we've got the checklist from the old control. Now this new project will be innovating and renovating this test cell. The next steps are actually this project team are taking what we've got here to develop the checklist for the student, student groups to be able to come in next and actually operate this engine for their classes and then any research projects that may be going on. Down here to the F109 lab or test cell area. Now we've got proof of concept there in the PT6. Now we can bring it down and take that same information, that same uh, mini controllers, and hopefully we can extract the information we need out of these ESCUs. So these, the electronic fuel control unit is what they're actually called on this particular engine. Most, uh, most of the industry would look at them as FADEX. So we want to be able to take that information out and, and basically get rid of this control system here. This was actually late 70s, early 80s technology. We're, we're concerned with the way we, we use these engines as far as being, keeping them maintained and readily available for the students and the classes and then these research projects that are coming up. Okay. And when we design our uh, next shoebox project uh, to go over here, it'll basically be talking to that electronic control unit and uh, that's how we'll control the engine from, from there.